Hi, welcome to the Refi Lab, where we magically clean up the environment with science, engineering, and a few clever ideas. Today, we are going to have fun with oil and water and discover whether they mix or not. Let's go over the materials you will need for this activity. We'll need some vegetable or corn oil, about an eighth of a cup, approximately. We'll need eight to 12 ounces of water. Any kind of water is fine. Some molasses, about a fourth of a cup, again, approximately. Some cotton balls, five or 10 of them. Some Q-tips, two to four should be fine. And then we'll need a couple of clear glasses that are eight ounces capacity or smaller. And then three other small clear glass jars or containers. They could also be smaller clear glasses or a clear plastic water bottle. All of that should work. And lastly, we'll need some forks or spoons. Three of them should be fine, and they could be plastic or metal. Let's start by exploring the concept of density and ask ourselves our first question. Which is heavier or denser? Is it oil or water? The answer is it depends. You have uh, oils like gasoline that you use in your car, for example, or vegetable oil. They're lighter than water, and they float on top. On the other hand, you can have heavy and extra heavy crude oils, and these are heavier than water, and they sink to the bottom. So the concept that we're interested in, or the idea that's important here, is that the density of a fluid tells us if the fluid will float or sink in water. And in general, density is the mass of the fluid divided by the volume that it occupies. So when we look at something like water, it has a density of 997 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, when we look at crude oil, some of the crudes are light, medium, heavy, or extra heavy. And you could look and see that their densities are different. Some of them are smaller than that of water, and some of them are greater than that of, of water. So when you have a heavy or an extra heavy, crude oil is going to sink to the bottom. When you have a light or a medium crude, then it's gonna float on top. Now the oils that you use to cook at home, these are lighter oils and they have densities that are also smaller than that of water. For this activity, we are going to see what happens when we add light oil to water. You will get some of your oil and a glass with a little bit of water and gently pour the oil into your water glass. Look at how beautiful the bubbles, the oil bubbles are forming, but then they're floating up to the top, making an oily layer at the surface. Now removing that is not that difficult. You can skim it or you can collect it using an adsorbent. In this activity, we're gonna use cotton balls, which are really a good adsorbing material. You will take the cotton ball and gently insert it into the oily layer. And as you discard it, as it fills up with oil, you can throw it away, get another one, and continue to skim the oil off the surface. Now, of course, when you have large amounts of oil, for example, a spill in the ocean, you wanna use much larger and more efficient adsorbents than cotton balls. Can you think of some besides cotton balls that would be good to uh, recover the oil from the surface of the water or remove the oil? from the surface of the water. People have even suggested making mats out of human hair to actually collect oil that's floating on the surface of an ocean or a stream or a lake. And you could see how we were able to recover all of the oil from the surface of the water. In our next activity, we're gonna look at what happens when we add heavy oil to water. Now, of course, uh, we're using molasses instead of heavy oil. So you will take your molasses and 
add it gently into a glass that has a little bit of water in it and just slowly pour the molasses. Now, unlike the light oil, you see the molasses immediately sinks to the bottom. And even the last bit kind of comes together and moves towards the bottom. And that's because the molasses, like heavy oils, are heavier or denser than water. Now, removing that from the water is not as easy as the light oil. We're using Q-tips because we can't really use a very large cotton ball. But you could see that as you put the Q-tip into the water trying to reach the molasses, you could see some of the molasses actually dissolving in the water. And that's what happens in real life, that these petroleum hydrocarbons have components that actually do dissolve and they pollute the water. So not only is it hard to remove them, but they also dissolve over time. And some of the things that come out of the heavy oils are harmful to life forms in water bodies like the ocean or a lake. And they are much more difficult to control and manage and remove and minimize their harmful impacts. Now that we have seen how oil floats and molasses sinks, let's explore some other concepts and ask ourselves the question, can I get my oil and water to mix somehow? Is it possible to shake them or stir them vigorously? And can I mix them that way? Well, the answer is that oil can indeed be mixed with water and it makes something that's called an emulsion. And you may be familiar with some emulsions and some of them are actually quite tasty. Salad dressing is a perfect example of a tasty emulsion. Now the thing about emulsions is that they could easily separate back to oil and water. And so to keep them from separating, you need an emulsifying agent that holds the oil and water together. And salad dressing, vinegar, is a good emulsifying agent and we will see that in the next activity. So in activity 1C, we're going to try to see if we can mix some oil and water. Now I've got two little containers with uh, water, a little bit of water in one of them with oil on top, light oil. And I have another one with just oil. So let's see what happens. First, we're going to take the water and oil. And I'm going to use a spoon to stir the water and oil as vigorously as, as possible. Obviously, you can get a whisk, you can get a mechanical mixer. In this case, we're just vigorously mixing the oil with water. I mixed really hard and I do get bubbles, but as you will see, they will return to an oily layer. Now, if this was really true light oil, some of the oil would actually dissolve in the water, again, like the heavy oil, potentially harming life forms in that water body or in the ocean or the lake. Now, on the other hand, we talked about the idea of emulsifying agents. So for the second part, I'm going to take some vinegar, household vinegar, and add it to the oil and try to stir that vigorously and see what happens in comparison to stirring light oil in water. So again, I'm going to use a spoon and stir the mixture very vigorously. You can use a whisk, you can use a mechanical mixer, but this works just as well. And you will see how vinegar and oil will mix differently than the oil and water. So you could see where now we have a layer where the oil and vinegar have mixed. And then some of the vinegar and oil have also mixed and are heavier because of the different ways that the oil and vinegar will mix. And that's what happens when you buy a salad dressing bottle. They recommend that you shake it and that's to make sure that the emulsion can actually form more properly and you will get both vinegar and oil when you pour it on your food. In the ocean, if you have a light crude oil spill, 
you want to try to skim as much of the oil as possible. But if you're not able to skim all of it, maybe you would want to try to break up the oil layer in the water somehow. So can we really do that? It can be done, but you need some clever ideas. One of the ideas is to use what's called a dispersant. And a dispersant is a chemical that can help break the oil into smaller droplets. In oil spills in the ocean, sometimes we spray the dispersant on top of the surface of the water to break up the oil. In the next activity, we're gonna look at what happens when we add dishwashing liquid soap to your oil and water mixture and see if we can break up the oil away from the water into smaller droplets. So if I cannot remove the oil, maybe I can disperse it and break it apart so it gets diluted and is less harmful. In this activity, we're gonna to try to do exactly that. I have a little container with water and some light oil floating on the top. And I'm just adding a few drops of dishwashing liquid. So then I'm going to take again the back end of my spoon and stir this mixture vigorously, as vigorously as you can, for a few seconds. And then we're going to observe what happens. See how now I have a dispersion mixture where the oil and the dishwashing liquid soap have sort of mixed and made beautiful layers, one on the top and one on the bottom, with different shades of coloring. In this case, if you had ocean waves or the material is in the lake, it gets sort of diluted and dispersed and won't remain as one oily surface that prevents sunlight and oxygen from entering into the water body and causing further harm. Well, that was fun. Let's talk about some other ideas with oil and water. Strong ocean waves, you know, can move the oil to the shore. Can you think of clever ways to protect our shorelines or clean them up? We also talked about how birds get covered in oil and how we can save them by washing them with dispersants. What about if you could design a better dispersant that's less harmful to the environment? And then lastly, molasses, like heavy oils, moves to the bottom of the ocean and it's very hard to remove. Can you think of clever adsorbents that we can mix in with this oil to make it less harmful and maybe protect uh, wildlife at the bottom of the ocean from this oil? My name is Dr. Rifai. I hope you enjoyed floating ideas with us about oil and water. Join us for more fun activities or email us using rifai at uh.edu. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.